You were under the impression when they say 95% effective at stopping so, uh, COVID-19, you think, well, that's it. We can reach herd immunity because it stops the infection and I can't spread it to anybody else. And you keep hearing all the scientists and pundits saying, we got to get as many people to get this vaccine as fast as we can in order to achieve herd immunity and stop the infection, infection around the world. But here's the problem. They are not telling you that it stops the infection. It is stopping the illness or the symptoms known as COVID-19. You are still, as far as they know, infected with SARS-CoV-2. You can still spread SARS-CoV-2 to anybody you meet on the street. Thereby, when they're rushing you to get a vaccine to begin with, saying we can reach herd immunity, there is nothing in science that proves that that's true. In fact, they are only going to turn you into a uh, asymptomatic carrier. Now, I mean, we're going to use Moderna as the example. Remember, Moderna has 30,000 participants and Pfizer has 45,000 participants. The news will have you believe that 30,000 people are part of this trial, but it's really not true. The trial is only going to come down to, in this case, about 196 people. It's called the end point of the trial. Here's how it worked. One group, 15,000, half of the 30,000, got the vaccine. The other group, 15,000, got the placebo. They're not studying 30,000 people. They simply wanted to find the first 150 or so that got symptoms, otherwise known as got the COVID-19, right? The expression of the virus. And that's what they found. So the study is actually of 196 people. And in this case, those that got vaccinated, 11 of them ended up being infected within this time period. And 185 of the placebo group that had the symptoms, right? That actually ended up having a cough or sniffles or things like that. That's what they're looking for. Who got symptoms? 11 in the vaccine group, 185 in the placebo group. So here's what they're telling you. It's not 95% effective at stopping the virus. It's simply 95, it works 95% better than the placebo at keeping you from having symptoms, okay? Remember, it's only masking your symptoms. If you don't believe me and you think we can somehow achieve herd immunity with this, listen to what the experts have to say. These COVID uh, vaccines are uh, preventing clinical disease. We don't know if they prevent transmission. And that's the primary endpoint of most of the virus, it's to prevent clinical disease, to prevent symptomatic disease, not necessarily to prevent infection. But again, I think people ought to put this in perspective. What we're likely to get is something like the flu vaccine. It's not necessarily going to protect you from infection, and it may not uh, work for everyone. We do not know yet if these vaccines will prevent asymptomatic infection, and therefore we do not know if these vaccines will prevent virus shedding and therefore have an effect on community transmission. That is something it is not possible to know at this point in time. Already, if you're joining us for the first time, you see why we've been cut off of the internet and why they don't want you listening to what we're having to say. I'm not telling you these things. They're telling it to you, but no one in mainstream media is really covering it or drilling down. So are we together on this? These trials and this vaccine, both Pfizer and Moderna and AstraZeneca, as they get approved, cannot stop infection. There's no way to prove that they can. Therefore, even if your symptoms go away, all it has done is turned you into an asymptomatic carrier that can spread it to other people, meaning your mask is not going to come off because you got a vaccine, meaning it doesn't matter what they do, you can still spread it. We can't get to herd immunity. This vaccine is useless for that. But here's what's bothering me. What they're telling you it's useful for is it's better at reducing your symptoms so that fewer people will have symptoms if they get the vaccine. And for some of you, I guess that sounds pretty good. I'll go ahead and take the risks of a completely experimental vaccine as long as I know that I have a chance of avoiding getting symptoms myself. Except that all the headlines last week started saying something different. Let's take a look at some of these headlines. Doctors say CDC should warn people the side effects from COVID vaccine shots won't be a walk in the park. 
Trump COVID vaccine czar says side effects significantly noticeable in 10 to 15 percent of recipients. Participants in Moderna's and Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine trials told CNBC in September that they were experiencing high fever, body aches, bad headaches, day-long exhaustion, and other symptoms after receiving the shots. Now, we covered some of these stories. There was an article a few weeks back we talked about. Let's bring that back up. The coronavirus vaccine trial participants report day-long exhaustion, fever, and headaches, but say it's worth it. It went on to say after getting the first shot on August 18th, he said he felt a little under the weather for several days with a low-grade fever. He got his second shot at a clinic on September 15th, eight hours later. He said he was bedbound with a fever of over 101, shakes, chills, a pounding headache, and shortness of breath. He said the pain in his arm where he received the shot felt like a goose egg on my shoulder. He hardly slept that night, recording that his temperature was higher than 100 degrees for five hours. If this proves to work, people are going to have to toughen up, she said. This is another person that got sick. The first dose is no big deal, and then the second dose will definitely put you down for the day for sure. You will need to take a day off after the second dose. Another participant in Pfizer's trial said he was up all night after the first shot from the pain of the injection. The booster injection he received caused more of that same pain in his arm, followed by intense Flu-like symptoms that hit him around 1 a.m. He couldn't sleep that night without an electric blanket and shook so hard that it became uncontrollable and he cracked part of his tooth from chattering them. It hurt to even just lay in the bed sheet, he said, before he decided to see a doctor. Now, we thought that those were isolated incidences, but now Slowey, who is the vaccine czar, is telling us, no, that happened to about 10 to 15% of the trial participants. They're telling you only 11 people in the vaccine group had those symptoms, but Slough is saying no, 10 to 15% did. So that means this is what this should really look like. I've just added 1,500 symptomatic people that got sick because of the shot because that's what we know. If it's supposed to avoid symptoms, it didn't do that. And so now we have 1,500 people making this number, you know, 1,511 people that are sick compared to the 185 that were uh, having symptoms in the placebo group. Do you see what this is? If the entire endpoint and purpose of this vaccine was to help you avoid symptoms, it's failed because the placebo actually performs 90% better at avoiding you having symptoms than the vaccine. The vaccine appears to be making more people sick. How did they get away with this? You're probably saying, Dell, this can't be possible. I know, it's totally crazy to think about, but let's read the study on how the study looked at when they were going to record symptomatic people. This is beautiful. Here's how they hid 1,500 or maybe even 2,000 if you go with the full 15% of sick people that were more sick than those that got the placebo. Take a look at this. If we lay out how the trial worked, this is how it works. Day zero, you get your first shot right there. And on the 28th day, you get the booster shot. 14 days after the second shot is when the monitoring finally begins. You see the scam here? People get sick as crazy after the first shot, so sick that doctors are concerned they won't even show up for the second shot, but they don't count. Then a ton of people get sick over here right after their second shot. About 1,500 to 2,000 people are sick right in here, but they don't count. They don't count in our trial because we very conveniently don't start counting symptomatic people until two weeks after all of this happened. You're better off not getting the vaccine.